Hello, everybody, and welcome to a new episode of Rivet Pure Live. I am your host, Nicolas Tellier. I'm an architect, a BIM specialist, and the founder of the website RivetPure.com. Rivet Pure Live is a show where we help you become a better Revit user. And today we do have a very special guest. Before moving on, presenting the guest and getting this session started, a couple of things to mention and talk about. Uh, but first, in the chat, if you're watching, can you please type where you are watching from? Because it's always fascinating to me. Already there are some uh, Mikhail from Israel, Roger from Pittsburgh, uh, 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 Patrick from Kumasi, Ghana, John from Tampa Bay, uh, Richmond, Virginia, Florida, uh, somebody else from Israel, North Idaho, Kenya, Montana. Uh, keep seeing it, always fascinating. Um, Meanwhile, I wanted to talk about the Revit Pure Pro template. And, and before explaining what this is and before moving on with the guests, I wanted to do a giveaway. So I'm going to give one free copy of the Revit Pure Pro template. So let me just start the giveaway and explain how it works. All right, so you can type in the chat of the YouTube session, exclamation mark raffle. So type that in the chat and YouTube will randomly select one of, one of the person that wrote that in the chat and you will be the winner. And then you can send me an email to nakedrevitpure.com to claim your prize and I will give you a free copy of the Revit Pure Pro template. Uh, so yeah, type in exclamation mark raffle. And to explain what the Revit Pure Pro template is, well, I became a BIM manager in 2012 and was tasked with transition a whole firm from AutoCAD to Revit. And at first I was like, okay, how do you organize a template or organize the sheets? What do I do with the view templates, the view filters? Uh, do I need a welcome page? So it took me close to 10 years to figure it out, to know how to create a great template that everybody in the office understood that was easy to use, but super efficient, super organized. And whenever I work with my clients, uh, with new clients and they need a template, I start from this. I start from the pro template. So that's the template I'm using. And then I modify, of course, every firm need customization, custom families, and to rename all the files. But this is the pro template contains 16 pre-made schedules, uh, advanced project browser, uh, advanced view filters, phases are all set up, a way to manage the current origin point. So all things that cause me so much pain and blood and misery while I was trying to come up with a good system to be a good BIM manager. Uh, I figured it out, mostly at least, and it's all included in the Revit Pure Pro template. So if you want to download the template, uh, rivetpure.com slash pro template. And meanwhile, there's a giveaway going on uh, already. Uh, lots of people. Uh, so three more minutes and we'll announce the winner. And for the rest of you, RevitPure.com slash Pro Template. So this is a result of 10 years of experimentation, research, and so on. All right, so a couple more minutes. Uh, meanwhile, uh, 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 I'm ready to introduce the guest. So Jason Josselson is an architect based in Jerusalem in Israel. He has graduated from the University of Cape Town, and since then, he has specialized on being a design architect working for multiple firms. Since 2019, Jason started his architecture consulting and teaching company called the Concept Design Architect. Jason helped hundreds of architects and designers to prepare better renderings and presentation documents. So, uh, welcome to the show, Jason. How are you? How are you going there, Nick? How are you doing from Jerusalem? Yeah, yeah, doing great. So it's the evening for you right now, right? Yeah, we're going on here at nine o'clock, nine oh seven. Yeah, so hot day, a very hot day here in Jerusalem. Yeah, really. <laughs> yeah, it's Quebec City, so it doesn't get uh, very hot too often here. Yeah, uh, well, it's great. To, it's great to be here. It's great to be here. I'm looking forward to sharing with your audience. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for accepting the invitation. And I was interested in doing this. Typically, we have more really BIM. Uh, BIM topics, BIM management, and so on, and, and using Revit. In your case, I was interested because I'm still in my heart an architect, even though I don't really do presentation or concept design anymore, because I'm more focused on the BIM side. It's something I'm passionate about. And 
So I, I guess my question, how did you become uh, an architect specialized in concept design? That's a great question. You know, um, I suppose everything's born out of a struggle, you know, when you really get into the industry, the commercial industry of design and architecture, it's really stressful. And in the beginning, when I started off, I used to, um, have different methods that I used that were great, but they weighed me down. You know, I used to work through the night and I used to get home early in the morning for breakfast. So it meant staying up through the nights for presentations, for preparing for presentations. And I decided in my life that I was going to re-engineer the way that I worked. And then I came up with certain ways that I worked. And I, I, I started focusing on presentation of my work because what i would do is that i would be designing as well as presenting so i'd be what i call a, a hybrid architect with the ability to do rough planning and planning and schematic design and then take that into the the, the 3d envelope and produce presentation drawings of my design and i needed to find a much easier method to work with. So I started innovating, working with Revit's massing tools, and then also bridging onto SketchUp and Photoshop and um, using those three tools together in synergy to streamline my workflow. Yeah. I hope All that right. makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, it does. I'm sure it took a while to figure out the, the right workflow. So just very quickly, uh, we have a winner for the Revit Pure Pro template. It is Derek Nunes. Hoping I'm saying that right. So, uh, Derek, please, Derek Nunes, please send an email to Nick at RivetPure.com and to claim your prize. And I will uh, give you, assign you a license of the RivetPure Pro template. So, uh, congratulations to Derek Nunes. And thanks for everybody else for being part of the giveaway. So, back to you, uh, Jason. Yeah. So, how long did it take you to, to start refining all these processes? It must have been a while, right? Because I have the same struggle, especially in architecture school. You know how the deadlines were crazy, all nighters, creating presentation documents took forever, renderings always crashed. So how long did you get with a method that we are really comfortable with and that produced consistently great results? Yeah, so the the question is is a journey over twenty years really. But I suppose I established the tools that I was working with earlier on. And what I found was that I think the best way to explain your, 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 your question is just quickly to go through some slides. So if I could share my screen, Nick, it might help. Um, I'm sharing my screen one. Is, is, is it coming? Through? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. People can see your screen now. Yeah, sure. Okay, so, so it took a long time to re-innovate the way I work because fresh out of university in, the, in 2000, then basically kind of you get into the industry and you've got to choose which tools that you, you, you're going to specialize using. And it's really overwhelming. And through trial and error, through working through different projects, as well as then being dumped in some really big commercial firms and doing design and presentation for them, you kind of learn what everyone's using and then also kind of uh, extract the strengths out of the different software. So this is me. I think the best way to, to explore the journey is just to give you a little bit of an idea of where I've come from. This is uh, me in, uh, in Johannesburg at uh, SVA International. And this is the type of work I'd be doing on a daily basis. So I'd be taking the rough schematic design and I would be uh, transferring it into the 3D envelope. And then also what I used to love to do is print the presentations out on A1, A0 pages in black and white and kind of get the sort of sketchy type of look and feel. So the first thing that limited me in in my presentations and i'm not saying that it's a bad thing i'm just saying when you're trying to work before for commercial deadlines and the deadlines are crashing when you get into rendering using v-ray and and max and lumion and twin motion there's just not enough time it's just too much stress surrounding the the refining of the renderings 
to deal with the process after you've been designing for a few days and now you have to prepare for a a deadline it's just backbreaking labor so i had to find an easier way to firstly model my work up that's the first side of the coin and secondly the other side of the coin is find a quicker way to present and so um look i've been fortunate fortunate enough to um take those methods that i have learned and start teaching them to uh, an audience also online so i have a huge uh school um where i teach these methods online and really they've been uh i would say a, a streamlined approach to refining this method and imprinting it onto my students uh, it's 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 really happening right now but it's taken me years to distill it into a training and so i'll show you what i'm really busy with uh, normally these are some of the buildings um so some towers in the middle east there are a lot of projects that one could run through i'm just picking a few this was designed in revit uh, and using the massing tools in revit and then taking it into SketchUp, using a little bit of V-Ray, and then obviously using Photoshop to compile the presentation. Um, this is a, a Revit model that was done in, uh, it's a design of the archaeological museum down in a LUT, and basically it was completely modeled in Revit and refined in SketchUp and then rendered in Lumion. So I've been using all the softwares, you know, that, that are out there, but a project like this, when you're rendering in Lumion, you're trying to get it right, it takes a while, you know, it's not super quick. And then other projects where you're using combination of Revit, SketchUp, and uh, this is a little bit of V-Ray, just to create the mix, is all, it, it, it takes a little bit more time, you know. Um, so projects like this, this is completely done in Revit, SketchUp, and Photoshop. No Lumion, no rendering software. This is a project that may have been completed in about three, four hours from beginning to end. So that's the type of speed that you're working at, where the other projects that are more refined are maybe two, three weeks long to prepare it. So you, you want to get yourself into a position, especially if you're a design architect, to work super quickly, you know, and, and that's sort of the process that I have uh, distilled for myself to to take away that stress before uh, backbreaking deadlines, you know. Um, let's, let's just take a little bit of a look, you know, this is the life of an architect, you know. This is what they teach yeah. you at university. Yeah, that, I've been there. I've been there. You, yeah. I don't know if they teach this to you at all universities, but they warn you about working through the night, you know, and how stressful it can be. And um, that's really what you need to try and avoid in your career. So it's all wonderful, you know, trying to use the best softwares out there, but you've also got to consider that your time is extremely valuable. We all know what this feels like, you know, falling asleep uh, on the job, you know and and it happened to me too many times and it, not only that it takes the stress on on your health your health uh, suffers you know and you you stop looking after yourself as a designer because of the amount of work that you have to complete and um uh, that much to answer uh, your question there nick mm -hmm. yeah 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 it does yeah, well, I think people would be curious, uh, especially when mentioning uh, Revit, SketchUp and, and Photoshop. I know in the BIM community, people generally are not fans of SketchUp because uh, the way we typically see uh, SketchUp and Revit workflows is a designer creates a building in SketchUp and then they ask uh, the BIM team to recreate it from well, import, it, try to import it, which is very hard in Revit. But it, the way you do it, it's the other way around. So perhaps I'm going too fast here. I'll, I'll let you keep going with that. Uh, but yeah, can, can you tell more people uh, people about your workflow and how it's backwards from what we usually see? Yes, yes, absolutely. I'll show you right now. I think the first thing we have to speak about is what Sir Norman Foster uh, speaks about. You know, it's one of his quotes. And he's, he said that the pencil and computer 
are, if left to their own devices, are equally dumb and only as good as the person driving them. And he was so right, you know. I mean, it's really a bold statement. But the question is, you know, when you take a look at uh, designers from the past, like Frank Lloyd Wright, Miss van der Rohe, all they had were pens, pencils, rulers, set squares, and drawing tables and paper. And that's how they designed the most incredible buildings. And so we need to take a look at tools of the computer, uh, the PC, as tools. You can't look at them as as tools that will automatically automatically design for you and render, render for you. You need to control the tools and not let the tools limit you in what you're trying to accomplish. So it's, it's a bit of a mindset uh, uh, change. And that's really, at the end of the day, um, what one, one needs to consider. You know, just quickly, we'll take a look at, can you see the this cockpit of the the airplane? Yeah, yeah, we do see it, yeah. Okay, great. So this is typically what happens to most designers these days because of the PC. They sit behind the PC and now they have to use the PC as a tool to, to control the design process. And so it's completely overwhelming for a lot of designers because there's so many switches, you know, and obviously when it comes to using Revit or it comes to using a render software, there are a lot of nuances that you have to consider to get things right. So what I did is I came up with a hybrid process, which is a combination of rough planning and communicating the 3D form. So there those two sides of the coin that I speak about. If you're going to be a design architect in the commercial industry, you're going to need to have those two tools at your disposal, those skills, the rough planning, and then also communicating your ideas. And so the way I did that was, um, if you take a look at this diagram, what I do is I extract the strengths out of these three softwares. I don't use everything in these softwares. Obviously, I'm not doing technical work anymore. I'm not doing the technical drawing. So in Revit, I'm using the massing tool and the curtain wall systems and the generic model systems in Revit. SketchUp I'm using to get dynamic views. So I use SketchUp as a tool to do fine, finer touches and also to find amazing views because it's super easy to find those views. And then Photoshop I'm using to compile my presentations. So those three tools, when you combine them together, you get the sort of combination in the middle here, which I call the hybrid design process. And what we're going to take a look at now is the process. Should we jump into the process? Yeah, yeah, uh, absolutely. People okay, are ready, br I think. Okay, brilliant, brilliant. So we're going to take a look at this concept design model. I'm just going to show you um, the the final drawing of it. This is just a, a, a concept. So this is the, the Revit model we're going to be taking a look at. And then basically that's modeled up using massing and generic modeling tools in Revit and curtain wall systems. And then I'm going to show you this particular render, which takes about 10 to 15 minutes to, to get it looking like this, if you're really quick at the process and really getting the detail out of your Revit model. Now, the beauty about Revit is that you can use curtain wall systems for many different um, design nuances like all these horizontal brief soleil type of elements here the structural elements the geometry that set up here i haven't found a the massing tool in any other software so i extract the massing tool out of revit to sorry i i use the massing tool to extract the the power of it to create these unbelievable geometries. I'm not using organic modeling tools. I'm using the massing tool and the generic model tool. So let's just jump into the process. Um, mm -hmm. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to uh, bring the, the Revit model in here. I've got Revit on. Are you seeing yeah. my Revit model here, Nick? Yeah, I, I do have a, a quick question. So uh, you didn't make, uh, quickly mention it, but what do you think are uh, the pros of using a sketch-like rendering instead of using Enscape and Lumion? So is it mostly the time it takes to s probably set up a scene using uh, Lumion or Enscape? 
Yes, exactly. So a sketch like render really is an easier way to commute, uh, communicate your work. And when you're using sketch like renders, firstly, it's easier to prepare. So you're looking at turnaround times of maybe 20 to 30 minutes per image and preparing it really quickly using SketchUp and Photoshop. Or you could be using the the high-end softwares like V-Ray and, and Lumion Twin Motion. And that takes a, a lot more time, especially to get it right. I would say a couple of hours, a few hours to a couple of days to get it right. And it's not very forgiving. So when you use those methods and you, you're so right, you know, because I, I, I'll show you when you take a look at this is of the Lumion website. Um, basically, this is an amazing image. This is a phenomenal image before we jump into Revit. And but to prepare an image like this, you need to be a super genius. You know, these images aren't easy to get to this level of clarification, of refinement. You need the ability and the know-how to deal with textures, with light, with reflections, with all the switches like we showed you earlier, the cockpit of the 747. There, there's so many little nuances that you need to understand to get a balanced image that's compelling. This is off the Chaos Group website. Um, this is one of their buildings and it looks like a photograph, but I can promise you that it didn't take 20 minutes to create this or 30 minutes to create this. It took maybe a few days, maybe a week. It depends who created it. But you have to be a super genius to produce this type of image. And not only that, if you do want to produce this type of image, it's going to cost a lot of money to produce because you need to go to a specialist. And so then you're left with the choice. You know, Do I produce a high-end image out of my model or do I kind of knock something out that looks sort of okay? And that's what a lot of architects are doing. They're not achieving this level of, of refinement because firstly, they don't have the budget to pay a visualization artist. And secondly, they don't have the time to focus on the software because they're so busy designing, you know? Mm -hmm. So that that is really the, the issue is that um, it's time maybe and also the learning curve to get all these softwares, although Twin Motion and Lumion are a lot easier to use, but to, to achieve a, an amazing image, you need to be super, super clever when it comes to rendering, you know. So then you're left with other choices. You're left with choices to do hand renderings, you know, and you also need to be super talented to do a hand rendering or a sketch, you know, maybe it's a Copic marker or, or whatnot. You know, you, you you need to be talented and you need to practice these methods, which can also be very time consuming and unforgiving. If you make a mistake, you may have to start again. So the question is, you, you have choices, but the choices are limited by time. This looks like an image that was created maybe on a CAD print and then Copic mark on top of it and then a fine liner. But there are different ways people are presenting, you know, like, this particular image, I think, is an I think it's an Archicad image, but it's it's a technical image, and also the client doesn't respond to this type of image very well. It's too complex for a client to digest unless he's a trained architect or developer, you know. And then you have your direct exports from from your screen captures from Revit. It's a project I'm working on, and basically. The, the client can relate to it, but it's not a very friendly image. So you're left with the choice to to find a method that works super quick for you. And and so what I teach in my trainings online right now is how to do a sketch like render. And I'm going to show you what that's all about. Basically, it looks something like this. It looks more so like a watercolor. And you, you get the most amazing look and feel out of your your models and you can do it really, really quickly. You know, if you take a, a Revit model, this is a Revit model. It's of a boutique, uh, it's a house um, in plan. And if you take it into SketchUp from Revit, it looks like this. But if you soup it up with, with the techniques that I use quickly, you'll turn something that looks banal like this into something that looks like this really quickly. And so they're quicker ways of working. And I, I think maybe we, we can jump into. Um, yeah, sure. You know, I think we can. Uh, the, the process. 
we can jump into the process. Another really quick question. Do you think, uh, in addition to uh, saving time, there are artistic uh, advantages to using Sketchlike? Do you think clients are more responsive to more abstract Sketchlike uh, images? Look, all I can do is speak from my own experience. And my experience mm -hmm. over the last 20 years is that the results were astounding from this type of imagery. Mm -hmm. You know, I found clients that responsive clients were extremely happy about the, the look and feel, not asking for high-end renders, you know, and in fact, just enjoying the feel. I think it really happens when you have a, a look and feel that looks something like this, uh, it's easier to digest for the mm -hmm. client you know he doesn't have a trained eye most of the time you know he may not have been through hockey school but um or, or he may not be a designer but any of these types of images yeah we did this rendering a few days ago you know it, it it's super seductive and the reason why it's got the line work you can see the line work in in these images and it sort of goes back to the frank lloyd wright stuff it goes back a hundred years to the way Frank Lloyd Wright would create imagery, you know. So definitely found 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 it works. Um, if you take a look, this is some of my student work. This is Benita from Atlanta, Georgia. She creates just the most amazing renders of her work. And if she's watching tonight, I just want to say to her, it, it's absolutely brilliant what you've done. But these are just different projects from some of my students. And so, yes, this method is a super powerful method and it cuts the, the time, uh, I would say, uh, five to 10 percent, you know, I mean, 90 percent um, at the inverse, at 10 percent of the time used, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I even have students in Africa that are using this method to sell their projects. So th there are easier ways out there. Yeah. All right. This is a student from Uganda. Yeah, yeah, that's go gorgeous. So I think we should. I will let you go to the present the workflow on uh, on uh, Revit. If, that, if that's fine for you and people in the audience, if you have any question or comments, I would be curious to hear uh, what techniques to use to present. Do you like these sketch like techniques, or do you prefer uh, to use uh, Enscape or Lumion? I would be curious to hear your thoughts about it. And meanwhile, Jason, I'll let you go when uh, you present on the software. Okay, okay, we can take a look at my process. So as I said, I was focusing and have been focusing, I would say a myriad of projects, maybe over 50 to 60 projects over the last couple of years, like last 10 years. And, and basically the, the way I use Revit firstly is, is to design. And obviously this is not a technical drawing, but it's the, the beginnings of a technical drawing. So really what happens in the beginning is I would obviously set up a mass. And the massing tool is something extremely unique to Revit. And it's just, I would say, one of the most powerful tools known, known to mankind. I haven't seen this tool anywhere else. And that is the sole reason I use Revit, although I know how to do technical drawings in Revit. But what you're busy taking a look at now is a mass. And that really is the place that I start. I start to model the form on top of the plan so if you take a look at the plan let's just grab the plan yeah i just want to put the section box on just let me uh i'll, I'll put it a, a plan off to the the side here so i could show you the plan if it's still there hopefully yeah 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 we can still see it okay so if you take a look at the plan here it's just going to wireframe i seem to have lost the 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 plan but you can see the plan over here anyway the plan of this building is a 40 by 30 square it's really a sort of an ener energy efficient form that gets used a lot to to do buildings so i based my design on that it's got a, a core and it's got obviously retail office space um surrounding it and it, it runs for about four floors so that's really the design and it's happening over my design here in this corner and so that's where i really start is with a very simple schematic plan that is one line we don't draw walls and we draw the lines if it's a boardroom or an office so and around the core is sort of a a walkway so you, and then there's two lift shafts as well as a, 
fire escapes here and also kitchen facilities. Very schematic, very conceptual because that's what I'm doing. I launched the projects in the beginning. So we're just going to take a look. So once, once I've got that happening, I come up with a mass that I think could look kind of cool, you know, for our first meetings. And I start to model a mass. And so obviously in Revit, when you model a mass, then you can split your mass into floors really easily. And we're not going to get into it. I'm just showing you quickly. So that's the, the first part of it. And the beauty about the, the, the Revit mass is that you can manipulate it really easily. You can obviously create it and then you can, you can play around with it. So it's almost like a, a virtual scaffolding for your products. And then what happens is I add my, my, my floors and I get my basic geometries in place. And then basically what I do is I also use the generic modeling tools. Now I use two forms of modeling in Revit. And the reason why I do that is because what happened with Revit is when Revit first came out, the massing tool, which is called generic modeling right now was different. So they upgraded the massing tool, which is the massing tool that exists in this um, functionality here. But there's also something called generic modeling, which I find super easy to do sweeps and stuff. So I set up, if you want to call it a cake, like if you're baking a cake, so I do the basis of the cake first and find the 3D envelope that, that works. And then I, I do that with the massing tool and then basically use the generic modeling tool to create the finer details. And you'll see how it works. So when I switch on everything, I'm going to switch on everything. Obviously, we can't go through the whole process. It will take maybe an hour just to go through this process. Then I use curtain wall systems to, I snap my curtain wall systems to the model and the, 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 the sweeps, like for instance, here, yeah, curtain wall system where these columns are, are, are based right now. And it gives me the most amazing geometry. So, if I want to change this curtain wall system, I can update it, I can edit it in the properties menu here, I can make more columns, less columns, whatever I want to do. And, and really, that's the way I create detail. I also create detail by, by using curtain wall systems on the windows and I create layers of different um, systems on top of one another, just variations of curtain wall systems. And that gives me the structural look and feel. It's a really powerful method to use. And I've used it basically on the envelope of the building. Obviously, we're not dealing with the interior right now. You can use the standard way of creating interiors. But the exterior is completely created with all these types of curtain wall systems. For instance, if I take this curt curtain wall system over here, let's just take it and, and uh, just delete this. So this is a, a, a generic model on top of the surface here. If I want to change it, for instance, and I want to change the shape, so I've obviously created it. And then what I can do is I can go into my curtain system. I can select my curtain, fine horizontal uh, um, selection over here. And then I can just go and create a system that looks like that. And then I can increase the, the numerical value here on the side to get it looking like some sort of steel briso layer, whatever you want to call it, and making it look pretty amazing and super quick and doing the whole building like that and then creating layers. But the beauty about it is that you can actually delete the generic model. You can actually delete this when you finish with it and um, it will just leave you with the, the, the structure. And so you can use it basically everywhere. I've also used it in the roof here to create some structural elements. And I use it basically everywhere. And it allows me to create a lot of refined detail super quickly. I can create this model in maybe 30 to 40 minutes. And what I'd like, like to do is I'd like to show you what this looks like in SketchUp. So once I'm mm -hmm. finished with this process, I also use a lot of sweeps. Now, a sweep is obviously, um, if you take a look at this, right, we can, t we can, create a sweep for a roof. Now, you'll see there's a profile here. And this profile, it, it latches onto the actual original massing geometry. So this is 
what the roof looks like in profile right now. It's very crude and obviously can be refined at a later stage when you just when the client says yes and you're going to do construction drawings. But you can go and change all these types of elements really quickly and update your, your building, you know, so I can make that longer if I wanted to make that longer or I could I could um I could I could create a different profile here. So we're looking at a profile which is a sketch profile in the generic modeling tool and using the sweep functionality. So I'm not saying that's what I want to do or design wise, but let's just say I, I want to create a profile that looks like that. And then you can see, I, I just finished the profile and it sweeps it around. And then what I can do is I can apply a curtain wall system to that profile because it's a generic model and it allows curtain wall systems to be applied to it. You can see that. Can you see that? I'm actually sticking things to the the profile here, which is super amazing. And I can actually go back and delete that profile. Anyway, I hope that makes sense. Does that make sense, Nick? Yeah, yeah, it does make uh, complete sense. And I think uh, we should take a couple of questions. Uh, first, our general comments. We know a question about uh, rendering re realistic versus sketch like. Neil says, we find sketches allow for the mind's eye to interpret conceptually over that of indibly. In indibly. Certain details are not solidified by the audience, which adds the value of artistic presentation. Yeah, I remember that's what we've learned in architecture school. If you're too realistic too early, it, it's you need to leave some room for abstraction. Uh, uh, Nehama, which is a previous guest of the show, asked if you ever have experience with landscape renders. Yeah, absolutely. I've done I've done a couple. Um, I, I, I have them in my portfolio. But mm -hmm. yes, I have done a lot of urban green spaces that kind of uh, fuse buildings together. So absolutely done a lot of that, you know, and, and Revit's fantastic for that as well. Yeah, uh, well, I'll give a shout out to uh, Nihama and the environment plugin team. They work on the plugin to help with the landscape modeling. And uh, somebody else uh, a little later, uh, so, uh, Lori Yan asks, what are you using for side, uh, sidewalk elements, floor or generic models? So how do you model the site, like the, the roads and the sidewalks? Yes, what yes. tools do you use? Yes, no, it's a great question. So, so basically, I use a floor slab. Um, all my my context is is done with floor slabs, and the slabs are amazing because they're just so simple to create in Revit. So this is a floor slab. It's just the same slab you would be using to create a floor in your building, but obviously it, it becomes a profile. So if you are doing your parking layout, then I would create um, uh, obviously this profile and then finish it off, which I'm doing right now. It's got a thickness. And then the asphalt below would also be a, another slab. So it depends. It, it, it depends where your pads sit. And also it depends on how complex your your your, um, your layout of your land is. You know, you could be on a slope. So then you have to look at using the contour tool, which is pretty difficult in Revit for me, which I start using SketchUp for. But if something's flat, um, yeah, using slabs and SketchUp. So we're going to go into SketchUp. You'll see more in SketchUp now. All right. So maybe just a couple more questions. Uh, yes, CowardDX, another regular of the show in the chat, uh, ask, have you put your sketch-like renderings and have it on VR? Have you ever, ever played with that? Or a virtual reality? Um, I'm not sure how one would do it because yeah. the way the sketch like render works is, is post production in Photoshop. So you're doing mm -hmm. one image at a time. So yeah. you'd have to find some sort of way of automating creating thousands of images in the same way. So I'm not quite sure how mm -hmm. one could do that. So when it comes to VR, yes, it's got its place, you know, towards the end of your process or spatially and whatnot. And I think these tools are all unbelievable. But for my process, I'd, it, it's never been necessary. You know, it's really never been necessary for me to to use VR. And I, I'm I'm super interested in VR. You know, but um, yeah, I just want to get the projects out quick. So if you can find a way, please tell me about it. <laughs> Great. Uh, there's uh, Andre Wilson that says, Hi, Jason. I also work at Bentel Associates for 16 years. Uh, 
Okay, what yeah. else do we have here? Yes, I remember, Andrew. I remember. I remember. Well, it's nice to hear from you again over YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, Mikael asks if you are influenced by, you mentioned Frank Lord White as an architect. Is it possible that there's an influence on the configuration in which you choose to present your design? Yes, absolutely. We can jump into that if you want to take a look. Should mm -hmm. we do that, Nick? After you've uh, answered some questions. Uh, yeah, I mean, that was mostly the, the, the questions for now. Then I think people would be curious to see what, uh, how SketchUp is used. Uh, I guess I do, I do have my own before we, uh, you show that maybe. Yeah. is. Um, uh, so when you d design a building, how do you start? Do you start by scribbling on the Sketchpad and then you move to Revit? Or do you go straight to Revit? How is your process typically for the very first yes. steps of the design? Yeah, so it, it depends. It depends firstly if you're working together in a team or it depends if you are proficient in uh, doing planning yourself. Um, so the first thing that I do is I would create a layout to scale. And the way I do it is different to some other people. You know, I've, I've collaborated with people that do it on paper. Uh, to scale so they, they they would sketch it out on a on a a zero piece of butcher paper and then you would do your planning that way and then what we would do if it was to scale we would leave a scale on the paper and then scan it in to sketch up and what i normally do is i don't use autocad but if there's someone that you uh use you know that uses autocad still or does planning then you could use autocad i use sketchup to to do my planning and i would trace over the the, the scale drawing and i would create my schematic design and sometimes what i do is i just jump straight into sketchup to do my 2d planning so i use sketchup if you want to call it as a 2d tool as well and i would create a schematic drawing just like you're seeing right now you know, this is the context. There's a school next door to this piece of land, which is actually a field at the moment. It's a real piece. Of, and I use Google. Uh, I, I I use a digital globe on SketchUp to to get my information of the land as quickly as possible. So within SketchUp, there's a there's a plugin that allows you to scan the whole surface of the earth, and 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 really get rough plot sizes i wouldn't use it for final construction but for beginning a project you can definitely get sizes off there and you know instead of getting a surveyor to send you a drawing you can start your project off that way all right that's i think that answered the question and i'm seeing a time flies i think it would be interesting to see the the rest of the the, the workflow so we have rivet for messing and the curtain systems and the sweeps we yes. create the mass and most of the geometry in the site. And then you go to SketchUp. Can you explain why and show a bit of it? Yes, I'll just show you quickly. I just in order to jump yeah, into yeah, sure, SketchUp, sure. what I'd like what I'd like to do is just quickly for two minutes speak about this particular man. This is Frank Lloyd Wright. He was a, a super stylish man. And you're talking about 120 years ago, and these guys had mastered the art of communicating their drawings. And when you take a look at this drawing, it almost looks like a SketchUp drawing. And they understood what the client liked. You know, they, they, they weren't foolish in their approach. They knew exactly what style would hit home with the client. So when you look at SketchUp drawings, you can almost see this type of energy in them. And they were masters. Um, their office produced you know and the perspectives came to life and the designs came to life but they came to life on the drawing board so i just wanted to say this is an amazing project one another one of frank lloyd wright's houses and i mean this is 120 years ago it's got shadows it's got trees it's got it's got everything it's even got a vintage kanye but when you take a look at a project like this this is the guggenheim right this is the epitome of what you need to start doing in, in, in your work, especially if you're doing 3D presentations. And we're talking about 3D presentation now. We're saying that what, what you take can see in this drawing is that there's a sense of scale. This whole block, there's about three blocks that have been used here for the Guggenheim Museum in New York. And there are people, which give you a sense of scale. There's foliage, and there's this whole three-dimensional form, which you can now relate to. So the whole key is the psychological trigger 
of bringing people into your design through scale. And when I mean people, I'm talking about the client. You want to bring the client into your drawing and create a narrative that's as powerful as this. And that's exactly what we're going to take a look at at SketchUp. Let's jump into SketchUp and we're going to see if we can use the same techniques that Frank Lloyd Wright has pursued. So here's our model. I did this earlier this afternoon. Um, basically, the power of using Revit and SketchUp together, they're like a brother and sister. So the model that comes out of Revit is super clean and super user friendly. So when you jump into SketchUp, SketchUp understands what Revit produced. And, and what I do normally in, in, in SketchUp is I embellish my model with, with Entourage to bring it to life. Because if you don't have the Entourage, let's hide the Entourage, right? This model, except for that one car, looks like it, it, it doesn't have place. There's no sense of place except for this car. Let's just hide this car over here. But there's no sense of place, right? And the minute, the minute you bring Entourage into your model, right, let's get it back on, then you start to understand the model in a different way. You start to understand the scale, the size, etc. So what I wanted to show you, let's just move around this model uh, really slowly so you can see the detail that Revit allows. I put the Revit Pure logo on there for you, Nick. I hope you like it. Yeah, uh, I love it's not it. exactly the, your logo, but it's... it's the newer Revit Pure headquarters when uh, yes. we'll uh, hit a thousand employees, we'll move there. Yes, this is the virtual one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so the way I bring my models to life is I, I use foliage, I use cars, I use trees, and I use entourage and the scale of people. Yeah, you can see that sometimes um, if you don't put people in, you can't understand the space. But let's particularly take a look at this area over here. Um, you can see it's a complex area. It's a curve. Now, if you had to do that geometry elsewhere, it would be super difficult. But because we use the Revit massing tool, we managed to place all of these columns around a curve, you know, wrapped around you equidistantly and made this fan fantastic, fantastic um, geometry work. Now, what I want to show you is, let's say in SketchUp, you decide to refine something, you know, you can see how versatile uh, SketchUp is, which we're going to speak about the, the, the view dynamicity uh, next. But if you want to adjust something in SketchUp, right, so let's say I, I'm just going to switch off the shadow so it works a little bit quicker. I don't want to slow my computer down because we're on the internet. But if you switch the shadows off and you just click on a column here. So what you can do is you can absolutely refine this column and you can redesign it quickly for your meetings. You can see the minute I change the column, all the other columns change. What I did is I indented the column maybe it's a st steel detail maybe it doesn't terminate at the top like this but there you go so all the other columns followed it because they are families in sketchup they call components and what happens in sketchup families are called components the same sort of concept and basically the two work together hand hand in first and really that's just so unbelievable because it's changed all these columns super quickly and 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 that's the power of, of of Revit, you know, really to 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 get that type of stuff done, as well as um, the line work. You can see in SketchUp the line work is super powerful. If you want to um, just isolate line work here, you can take a look at what this project looks like uh, as if it was a drawing, a Frank Lloyd Wright drawing. And your clients just go mad for this type of stuff. You know, when you see the line work, it's very much more architectonic than a, a photo realistic image. And then what's also super powerful about SketchUp, and this is, there are three different things about SketchUp that are super powerful. The one thing is that you can have these amazing dynamic views, right? You can go and hunt for a view. Now, if you're trying to do this in Revit and also in other softwares, it's super difficult to manipulate the software. So if you're looking for a view to show your client, maybe you want to show your client there, you there in a few seconds and you can save that view. 
or you could move up into an aerial view in seconds. You know, you're not playing with views. You've got one viewport here. It's super, it's like, it, it's primitive in, in the way it works. And it's just creating an exquisite, exquisite image super quickly. And that's what you want to do. You know, you've got to imagine that your client's arriving in an hour's time and you've got no work and you can hook up 10, 20 images for him using this, where Revit would be a little bit more laborious and I'm not putting Revit down, but it takes a, a lot more time to to choose. And also, you can you can fly and get views from any direction that you want. You know, you're not really limited because you would obviously populate your model with all types of entourage as you fly around here, and you'd get some people flying in the sky here. But what I'm saying to you is, you you would really be able to hunt for the correct view. Another cool thing about SketchUp is that you can distort the view. There's something called field of view where you can actually distort views. It's really powerful. So you could get a more foreshortened view. And when you find your more foreshortened view, you can go and you can hit two point perspective. Now, I wanted to say something else. If you're using Lumion and Twinmotion, SketchUp is the ideal bridge between Revit and those softwares because you would do all your refinement in SketchUp. Like, for instance, today we did it this Revit Pure logo here. But let's say I wanted to call it, um, I don't know, concept design. I could just simply type it in and then place it on the facade in seconds. So you can do logos and all that type of thing really quickly in SketchUp, which is amazing. And you can you can size things really quickly. Like I can I can completely control the size of this. You know, there's no, it's not parametric in the same way that Revit is. So you could distort this in, in SketchUp, you know, and it's distorting the 3D. There's no typing in, you don't have to, do anything like that. And then the last thing about SketchUp, which is really powerful, is the shadows. Now, they're not V-Ray shadows. Let's just go and um, uh, put the shadows back on. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, change my field of view again, right? And so get it back to something that's a little bit simpler. But the shadows are unbelievable. And they may be crude, and they may not work like Lumion, but you can just you can get some ideal shadows going here for your project ready for your your meeting and you can adjust the line work and the depth of the shadow and the, and the light of the shadow so you can make your shadows a little bit lighter and you could get these grayscale images super quickly with shadows and everything's in place ready for your meeting you can also get elevations for your presentation you can just go into front views here you can take perspective off and you can just switch perspective off. So you've got a complete uh, uh, for, uh, a flat view. And you can also export this back into CAD as a, a DWG if you wanted to do that. So it's super, super powerful. And to export these images takes a second. I export this to my desktop. And in a few seconds um, on my desktop as a JPEG. So this could be called Nick1. And there you go. And then I go into Photoshop and assemble everything in Photoshop. So I could take some aerial views, some perspective views, and I can hook up an amazing presentation. I can export this view, for instance, just quickly. And um, yeah, so in a nutshell, there's one final process that can be used. And that's obviously uh, pulling all of these images together into a narrative, into a collage. I hope that makes sense <laughs> yeah it does make absolute sense um most comments are very positive some people say oh i need to reinstall sketchup i didn't use it in the, for five years uh yeah i will say people in the bim community might be a bit snob about the <laughs> sketchup saying it's an inferior tool but you know i have full course about using revit for presentation drawings and it cannot do things like that it's simply not as good as that for a presentation, you have to admit it. And SketchUp is much more intuitive. That's the strong part of SketchUp. And yeah, as I mentioned earlier, I, I like how you flip the script where typically it's SketchUp to Revit, but in your case, it's the other way around. It's Revit first, have a stable geometry foundation, and then bring it to SketchUp to prepare for presentation drawings. 
And uh, there was a question yes. from uh, Neil that said, is the entourage Revit or SketchUp? So I think it is SketchUp. But my question would be, where do you get uh, all that entourage in, in SketchUp? Is it uh, the, the, the warehouse or whatever it's called, the uh, SketchUp libraries? Or do you have your own library? Yes. Yes. I, I collected a lot of small files. You know, I have small uh, downloadable files, which are really sm like byte size, uh, they're probably under half a megabyte, you know, the tables, the the trees. So you can discern the, the, the file size, but what you can really do in SketchUp, they've got uh, a um, here under window 3D warehouse, you can download almost anything under the sun, you know, and um, you just go to the top of SketchUp here, you can download a 30 day trial version and play with it. Um, but you can just type whatever you're looking for. For instance, if you're looking for a bicycle, let's just say, let's see what, what it finds, bicycle rack. So people have uploaded all types of, of, of collections or models here, and you can download anything. So for instance, if I wanted a the, the, this bike, I don't know, I could choose, let's choose this bike here. I could also see the file size and I can just download it into my project and it will download straight away into my SketchUp file. Let's see here. So there you go. Let's see where it is. There you go. You can see it here. It's a little bit uh, small, but let's just zoom in here. So there you've got your bike. So obviously this bike is um, a, a small file size, but you do get file sizes that are a little bit bigger that you want to avoid. You know, and, and that's super key. So just as long as you check out your file sizes, maybe if they're under a megabyte, then you, you're you winning, you know. But like all the stuff that I use, I've collected over the years. I've got my own library in my trainings. I give it away uh, to my students. There are a couple of hundreds, couple of hundred of diff different objects, trees, deciduous trees, tropical trees, cars, mm -hmm. trains, airplanes, all that type of thing, you know. Yeah, there, uh, I saw there were a few entourage people, like uh, color, like sketch-like people, almost yes. like uh, drawn with uh, crayons or something. Yes, these people are two-dimensional billboarding people. They're yeah, not yeah. three-dimensional people. Mm -hmm. And the purpose of them is that they super light on resources. Mm -hmm. And you don't need to have people that look photorealistic. Obviously, some of them are floating around here because I prepared it quickly. But... You, you don't need photorealistic people to get a sense of scale, you know. And in fact, you don't want to detract from your building. You know, you want to keep the eye on the building. So you don't want people to 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 look too sophisticated, you know. And, and that's really another trick that I teach my students, you know, is, is don't get too involved in the photorealistic people and worrying about mm -hmm. how to... Uh, embellish your model with people that look like they're on a cell phone or whatnot you know keep it simple the building is yeah, yeah. what you're trying to sell yeah sure uh there are a couple more questions we're in the car saying i haven't used sketchup in 10 years maybe it's time to get back to it give it a second <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh somebody says this is amazing i need to get working on sketchup somebody margaret says i buy podium which is a lot of entourage and components i don't know what podium is uh Medium a, re a render software oh, okay for okay. sketchup okay sarah says is the interior delineation done in sketchup after importing and can this process be used for interior views for fit ups so do you Absol use this process absolutely. for exterior only or this is the same process can be used for interior renderings no the the, the interior rendering renderings can be done this way too and super easy i have some of my students maybe i can even show you uh one uh, like a, a project let me just go and onto my website here and i'll just show you it's at the bottom of the page um it's one of my top students if if the page decides to load here we go um take a look at this rendering it should pop up at the bottom here while we wait for it i'll just show you one of one one of my renderings and so this is basically SketchUp. This is a, a model taken mm. from Revit or ArchiCAD. And then basically quickly, you can get it looking like that, you know? So mm. same process exactly that I use. 
I have a, a, a more sophisticated process to prepare the images, but super quick to do interiors. And absolutely, you can you can get amazing, amazing stuff done. Let me see if Fred's work has loaded. Let me just take a look here at um, his work here. So yeah, he, it's not a very big image, but let's see if I can zoom into it. You, you can see it's just an exquisite image of an interior in Florida and Miami for one of his clients, just super tastefully done. There's an Eames chair, there's a beautiful couch here. And he was sketching by using charcoal and uh, he was struggling, you know, because uh, he prepares three or four projects a day and he hooked this up using this method. And I mean, obviously he's, 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 he's a very well um, trained interior designer and he understands furniture and space. But I mean, you, you can't just rely on software, you know, you, you need to know what you're doing. And then he brought it to life in black and white. You know, he has the plans, he has another view of it, etc. So you absolutely can use it for interiors. Any more questions? <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, other questions? And Hama says she used a 3D warehouse and transferred it to Revit. Uh, somebody asks about the Not styles. A, yes. Uh, the is there a line style out of the box we should begin with that has this look that we can then begin to revise with our own style? So do, do you uh, you probably have created your own custom styles, right? No, in no. fact, there's a whole process in Photoshop where everything mm -hmm. becomes more um, customized, refined, and looks super amazing. But you can use the default styles here. I mean. You just need to go and play around with the default styles in SketchUp. Yeah, there are a whole lot that are already set up. You know, this is black and white, but you, you you have carte blanche on manipulating all the different colors. The line work you can manipulate the color, the 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 shadows, the intensity. Everything's manipulatable very easily. For instance, if you want to change the line work into maroon, you've got 32 million colors to choose from here. So whatever your line work color you want, you can choose and you can just basically, there's a maroon uh, version of it, you know? So yes, you, you can manipulate that. You can also manipulate your colors really easily. You can switch the, the colors on and you can absolutely go into SketchUp and choose, for instance, a color. Maybe you want this to be more of a charcoal color so then you can adjust it so it's a little bit darker. Let's see what happens. And let's say, I don't know, you can you can absolutely change anything that you wish color wise. But obviously you need to practice this process. It's not it's not something that um, you can you can try out straight away. You can, but you, you just need to understand where everything is. You need structure. You know, without mm -hmm. structure, then you kind of may get lost. All right, so we'll take a few more questions, but I think it would be uh, great to mention uh, the offer. So let me switch to my uh, to my screen, and yeah, you cannot see it, but right now we're seeing the the URL. And if you go to the YouTube, the the link, the first link in the video description, uh, you can see there. So this it's called the Artful Sketch Like Render Important Week. Can you explain what this is? Okay, yes. So if you take a look on the video. And I'm, I'm busy looking at the video on my side. Yeah, yeah people, that people are seeing the, the, URL, a, the URL. Okay, great. So if you see the URL, basically just click on that and you'll see that there is a sign up there. Just put your email and your name and then hit sign up. And then in the next few days, I'm going to send out a three part training uh, about this process. It's completely complimentary. It will show you all the steps that we've spoken about tonight in a more refined way. And then also um, I will be sending beyond uh, this particular training. It will all happen via email. Uh, you can get more, more feed from me, which is basically going to be more training videos. There's also going to be a masterclass that I'll send out at the end as well. So there's just going to be a load of value that I'm going to send your way and it will come via email. If you want, you can see underneath the, uh, the 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 video there there is a click to a facebook group so you could jump into my facebook group where i'll also be supplying the same information if that interests you just click on that link 
and just join our group and and then basically um, you'll have direct access to the community and more trainings as they come out every few days all right so yeah to get uh, this this offer and receive the videos it's the first link on the description of this video so all right so i'll go back uh, i'm back to yes. your screen now uh having a look <laughs> uh, lawrence had s some uh, uh says that he doesn't like sketchup and it's not bim but i, I would say about this if we're doing technical work we're further along the process we're doing cds yeah like sketchup is obviously not a great tool for that but we're talking about conceptual design so yes. vision to the client so to me whatever tools can help with this vision we, we we should use them and then the next step if the project is accepted it can go forward where we when start talking about bim it's kind of a different mindset a different part of the brain i would say no exactly it's like in the beginning sometimes most designers are working on risk so you want to take mm -hmm. as quickly as possible i'm not saying that you don't love architecture you've got to continue loving what you do but you've got to work quickly because you know your time is super valuable but when it, when the when the client signs the check on the dotted line and says all right let's go ahead with this process there's no ways you can construct a building without revit or other sophisticated softwares out there you know like what we know is out there you know and and so what i'm suggesting is is that even if you construct your model in a technical way in revit let's say the client has paid for it and has paid for the design to move ahead then you can still export the model your technical model mm -hmm. into sketchup to show the client you don't have to mm -hmm. use revit to show the client not that revit is is bad in any whatsoever way it's just quicker to put everything together unfortunately mm -hmm. softwares have their strengths revit strength is definitely the technical side sketchup strength is the views you know mm -hmm. every software has just got a strength about it and 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 you just need to maybe one day there, there will be a homogeneous software that's every got everything that you need inside but right now there isn't there's just not yeah. that yeah. yeah well to, to me it's interesting that you use uh, revit for modeling and then use sketchup for representation like that that workflow makes sense in, in my head uh i think p some bim people are traumatized because we have received a badly model sketchup model and then put put this in revit I'm like that's kind of a messy model how uh, am i going to do that or sometimes yes. you have yes. a sketchup model and the revit model in parallel so the designers yes. works on the SketchUp model and then the technical team work the other way around. So it, it, it's all messed yes. up in this way. No, I'm, I, I, I hear what you're saying. So what, I, what, I, what I'm preaching here is that, that never, ever use the SketchUp model as a technical model. Mm -hmm. You use Revit as your generating tool, your, your model generating tool. Do all your modeling in Revit and export it into SketchUp to show the client. So use SketchUp as a plugin to express mm -hmm. your work but mm -hmm. don't use it for you can come up with new ideas in sketchup you might take a look at your design and think i oh, know i want to do this to the design it really sucks this part and i want to fix it up you know i want to go and refine this this wall here and i want to make it look much better then go back into revit into it don't do it in sketchup you know the trees the people the parking all of that stuff the the cars then you'll do that in sketchup afterwards but don't don't hook hook the the model up don't build the model in sketchup you can tweak it and then go back into revit and remember what you've done because you've got it open on the screen next door just go into revit and quickly do it i mean it's it, it's how spoiled are we in this generation because you know we do things in the old days you had to use a pen and paper you know so go back into revit and, and remodel it up quickly you know it's mm -hmm. super simple sure so some people some people mentioned uh you using inkscape i've had a few episodes about inkscape uh, uh i love the tool uh, scar dx is a pretty interesting comment about uh evolve labs sketchup to revit and revit to sketchup translator i saw some gifs of that on linkedin i think and it was amazing so i'll I'll try to get the Evolve team on the show to explain their workflows. Uh, so thanks for that uh, comment, Skower. Wow, I'd love uh, to see that. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty fascinating. So I'll, I'll need to get these guys on. So I think we meant we went through most of the questions. Uh, is there anything else you wanted to uh, to mention or to uh, uh, talk about? 
No, no. At, at the moment, I think we've covered everything. Let me take a look here at the process. Um, no, I just maybe what 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 I can show you quickly is that there is uh, the Artful Sketch Like Render Masters program. It's a program that that runs um, for a few months, and we have a community. And basically, people jump into that, and they learn how to do the most amazing stuff. This is one of my students' work. Um, this is Robert Beach. He's a a well established architect, and he just did this himself. It's just super super special. And just my my students produced amazing drawings. And what I wanted to suggest is, if you're interested in that, um, also that information would be uh, supplied via email and also in the Facebook group. Nick. all right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's that, that sounds great so uh, make sure to uh, use the first link in the description margaret asks about uh the final step in photoshop i guess we won't have time to cover that today I, probably part of your course or maybe uh, at the sign up you'll send videos about it perhaps yes absolutely look the mm -hmm. final part in photoshop is a process that one needs to practice um there's a lot of airbrushing that happens it's it's, it's a process so um, they're bits and pieces, but one needs, you know, you, you can really only show so much in a training for 40 minutes. And, um, we have students that have, have been in the training learning how to do this. And, um, obviously like everything, like any sports, you need to practice. And so it's not about the software. It's about the human being behind the software that's controlling the mouse. And so one needs to practice how to do this and get it under your wings so that you can work super quick as well as have that stealth and before crushing deadlines, you know, that's super important. All right. That's sounds good. So yeah. So thanks. It was, it was amazing. Super insightful for me. I, I've learned a lot, uh, new workflows that I never considered. Um, Check the video description. The first link is to get uh, the free empowerment week to uh, get to learn more in details how to create sketch like renderings like that. And any final word, Jason? Well, not really. I just, um, I'm really happy to have shared with you guys tonight. And I really thank you, Nick, for inviting me on. We've been chatting for over a year now. I'm just super excited and with what you doing in the world, you know, and helping people learn and empowering people. It's just an amazing, amazing task, uh, you know, to have accomplished, you know, you have over thousands of people watching on a daily basis. And I'm just super excited to, to have shared with you this evening. Yeah. Well, the secret is, uh, one of the reasons I do live shows for myself, I get to meet all these amazing experts and I've got to learn, <laughs> learn so much talking to them directly. So, uh, thank you very much, Jason. Thanks for everybody in the chat. Uh, great questions, uh, as always super insightful, uh, for me. And yeah, I would be curious to try this workflow for sure. Even though I don't do much conceptual design these days, to be honest, more on the BIM side. So, uh, thanks everybody. And for the next episode of rivet pure live, I am not sure, but I will probably announce uh, an upcoming episode episode in the, in the coming weeks and there will be the third season the full season where the series of episodes will be on the fall starting in october and there will be a team this time it will be about revit families so lots of things coming on shortly in revit pure very excited about it uh, but stay tuned for more information about it and make sure to check out jason courses by uh, checking the first link in the youtube video description so thanks everybody Thanks, Jason. See you, everyone. See you next time. Bye.